Chapter Seventy One of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Heather Phillips. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter Seventy One Hannah Moore. The greatest name in the list of female writers on moral and religious subjects in the last century was born in Gloucestershire in 1744. In 1762 she is said to have written her pastoral drama in rhymed verse, entitled The Search After Happiness, which was immediately performed by the young ladies of the school, of which she, with her sister, was the mistress. If it was not much improved before its publication eleven years afterwards, this was certainly a remarkable production for a girl of seventeen. Shortly after the production of this poem, the sisters had prospered sufficiently to enable them to build a house, the first erected in Park Street, Bristol. The order and management of the establishment, together with the superior quality of the education afforded, rendered this school the most celebrated of the kind in the kingdom. It comprised upwards of sixty pupils, and twice the number might have been easily entered had the accommodation admitted. The person to whom Hannah was indebted for her advancement in critical knowledge and the principles of correct taste was, we are informed, a Bristol linen draper named Peach. He had, says Mr. Roberts, been the friend of Hume, who had shown his confidence in his judgment by entrusting to him the correction of his history, in which, he used to say, he had discovered more than two hundred Scottishisms. At the age of twenty, says Mr. Roberts, having access to the best libraries in her neighborhood, she cultivated with assiduity the Italian, Latin, and Spanish languages, exercising her genius and polishing her style in translations and imitations, especially of the odes of Horace, and of some of the dramatic compositions of Metastasio. One of the most important events in Hannah More's history was her first visit to London. The theatre, it is said in her life, on her arrival in town was the great point of attraction, and Garrick the great object of curiosity. Garrick was delighted with his new acquaintance, and took pride and pleasure in introducing her in the splendid circle of genius in which he moved. To the royal family, who inquired of him concerning her, he spoke in terms of the most ardent commendation. Mrs. Montague, Sir Joshua Reynolds, Dr. Johnson rapidly succeeded in her acquaintance, and in the course of six weeks, for such was the limit of this visit, she had become intimate with the greatest names in intellect and taste. In 1774 she published her tragedy of the inflexible captive, altered from Metastasio. The following year it was acted, first in Exeter, and then in Bath, with the greatest applause, Garrick on the latter occasion being behind the scenes, and a host of distinguished persons filling the house. Her first publication, the search after happiness had by this time reached a sixth edition besides having been reprinted in america in november seventeen seventy seven her tragedy of percy was produced at covent garden theatre garrick who had also contributed both the prologue and epilogue sustaining the principal character the success of the play was complete perhaps at that time unsurpassed it was translated by the Prime Minister of France into French, and in a German dress Percy appeared on the stage of Vienna. Miss Moore received on the occasion the most flattering honours and distinctions. The whole blood of the Percys did honour to their minstrel. The Duke of Northumberland, Earl Percy, and the editor of the Relics all came forward, complimented, and thanked her. An edition of nearly four thousand copies of the play was sold in a fortnight, and the authorist realized on the whole nearly six hundred pounds. The tragedy of Percy, nevertheless, has now ceased to be acted, 
and has, it may be apprehended, been read by very few living men. But Hannah More's exertion in the cause of religion, morality, and civilization were not confined to the writing of books of which she produced a great number, realizing to her ultimately thirty thousand pounds. One of her most meritorious services to the best interests of her country was the establishment of schools for the young throughout the district around her place of residence, the mining region of the Mendip Hills, where, till she came among them, the people, taught scarcely anything either by schoolmaster or clergyman, were almost universally in a state of barbarism. Schools upon the same system were established in neighboring parishes, and in a short time five hundred children were training in ten schools. Her habitual cheerfulness never forsook her, and in some other respect she was, at near the age of ninety, what many have ceased to be at seventy. End of chapter 71 Hannah Moore Recording by Heather Phillips